and welcome. Today we'll have a little bit more of an intro than usual on this one because this hike and adventure is a little bit different than all the other ones that we've taken. We're near Woodstock, New Hampshire today on Walker Brook Road, which is closed to traffic. There's no sweet view at the top of a mountain at the end of this hike. I don't think there's any waterfalls, but this is a special place. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute here. January 14th, 1942, there was a B-18 bomber on U-boat patrol off the coast out in the Atlantic and a blizzard rolled in. So they were on their way back home. They were based out of a army air base in Massachusetts. And in the blizzard with the low visibility, and then we understand that at the time, navigation was done with a guy in the plane. He had a navigator, he had a map, a compass, and a watch. So they knew roughly how fast they were going and what direction but when you've got a nasty crosswind, you can get blown off course. So a lot of times you had to be able to look down at the ground and by landmarks and things like that, also figure out where you were at. But there was cloud cover and a blizzard. You couldn't see very much. So finally they did get a break in the clouds. They looked down and they saw a city which they thought was Providence, Rhode Island. So they turned north. Unfortunately, it was Concord, New Hampshire. They were way off course. So you head north from Concord and you end up up here in the mountains. As the blizzard progressed, they started getting more ice on the wings. They were losing airspeed and they decided to drop down to 3,200 feet so they could try to get below the clouds and see where they were at. If they were where they thought they were or anywhere near there, that would have been fine, but unfortunately, they were up here and 3,200 feet will land you on the side of a mountain and that's exactly what happened. So the bomber crashed in the side of Mount Watanami near the township of Woodstock, which is down the road a mile or two. Now, of course, it's a blizzard. Down in the town, they didn't see anything, but they did hear three explosions up in the mountains. So they put together a party of, uh, of guys to go and check it out. And people get lost up here all the time. There's search and rescue teams here. They've been like that for years. And the 40s was no different. So these are experienced guys up on the mountain. They grabbed their gear, came out here and went searching. They went up the mountain. They found fires. And then one of the crewmen was stumbling out and he was in pretty rough shape. So they knew what they had going on pretty quick. The guys went back down the mountain and over the next day, they attempted to get the seven crewmen off the mountain. Two of them had already passed away. And the rest of them were in pretty rough shape. One of them had been thrown from the crash in the explosion and wrapped around a tree and broke his back. There had been a hurricane a couple of years before. The hurricane of 38 had knocked down all kinds of trees. So the original plan to get the guys down by toboggan was thwarted by that. And of course, there's no trail up here. So that was an issue. But a bit of a harrowing rescue, but they got everybody down that survived, five out of the seven crewmen. Afterwards, the army had to send some engineers up to uh, set the bombs off that did not explode in the crash. And then they also had to send a salvage team up here to get, there was a certain type of bomb site that was top secret on the B-18 bomber at the time. So they had to salvage that out before a German spy could come up and get it. The newspapers had reported the crash as taking place in Woodstock, Vermont. They didn't even get the name of the mountain right. They said it was on Mount Jim, which is the next one over. So I don't know if that was bad reporting or if they deliberately did that. At the time, 
to throw spies off of it. So to finish up the backstory on this, 79 plus years later, the wreckage of that B-18 bomber is still on the side of the mountain and it has become a relatively little known war memorial from World War II. If you're a local, you probably know about it, but it's not exactly someplace you're gonna find in a travel brochure. And our quest today is to head up the side of this mountain and find it. Let's go. Thing is becoming very plain here. Once we cross that river, the trail is just a suggestion. We've seen people climbing down from up here. The markers say go this way. Yeah. Uh, GPS. <laughs> That's probably going to be key today because we're in a part right now, even though we've got the markers, there is no trail here. We've got maybe a third of a mile to go and about 500 feet of vertical.
looking around at the wreckage here, it is amazing to think that anybody survived this. Never mind five out of the seven crewmen that were on this plane. It was just incredible. And then coming up the side of this mountain trying to imagine a rescue team from the local town coming up here not knowing what they were going to find and then finding so many survivors and having to try to find a way to get them off this mountain. It's just absolutely incredible. I'm not going to say this is a cool story, but it is amazing to think what happened here. And it's not really a well-known story. Although, we've seen quite a few people up here today. Two or three groups, several folks. We saw some people from Rhode Island who found out about it from a friend of theirs that lives nearby in Lincoln. And so they came up here today. Difficulty-wise, it's all in that last half mile. That was insane. I mean, I wish this camera did justice to it, but like that is very steep. And I'm just trying to imagine what that must have been like that night for those guys on this plane hitting this mountain and I can't even do it. Obviously most of these trees are not the trees that were here at the time, but that had to be scary as hell. We'll get down here a little bit. The kids are already starting to work their way down, uh, but we'll get their take on it. And we'll finish it up. I enjoyed the hike, it was really fun, uh, except for the way up. The way up was um, terrible. I liked to jump over the rivers, and there was a giant waterfall too, which I liked. The plane, I'm surprised anyone even survived that, let alone five people. But um, it was everywhere. There were pe pieces at the top, bottom, well not like the bottom bottom, but around at, like ar around the halfway point of the mountain. Um, overall, it was a really fun hike, and I uh, liked it. 